So, the Galaxy S26 Ultra leaks just got way more interesting, and if you're a Snapdragon fan, you might want to stick around for this. What's up guys, Tech Torch here, and today we're breaking down everything new about Samsung's next big flagship lineup. According to the latest reports, Samsung's gearing up to keep things spicy with a split-chip strategy again. Yeah, only the S26 Ultra is expected to rock the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, while the regular S26 and S26 Plus will switch to Samsung's own Exynos 2600. That's right, Exynos is officially back in the game. It's Samsung's way of showing confidence in their in-house silicon while still using Snapdragon as the headline chip for the premium Ultra model. It's a bold move, but it makes perfect business sense. Korean outlet Chosen Biz claims Samsung's sticking with Snapdragon only for the Ultra because, let's face it, the Snapdragon name sells. Meanwhile, the Exynos 2600 will power the standard and plus versions across most regions. If true, it means Samsung is betting big on its new 2 nanometer GAA process, trying to prove that Exynos can finally compete head-to-head -head with Qualcomm. This comeback could actually give Samsung more leverage in future Snapdragon deals. Analysts say, though, don't expect an Exynos Ultra anytime soon, not before the Galaxy S27 series in 2027. So, for now, the Ultra remains Qualcomm's territory, while Samsung refines its silicon game quietly behind the scenes. As for the launch, multiple sources now confirm a February 2026 release window. Some reports even mention February 25, while others hint at a possible late January unpacked event that wouldn't delay the actual sales timeline. Apparently, Samsung was able to pull this off after reshuffling its lineup, dropping the Edge variant and bringing back the Plus model, which briefly pushed the internal schedule. Now, things are back on track. But here's the twist, chip selection might also impact pricing. With Qualcomm chips being way more expensive than Exynos, many insiders believe the S26 Ultra could see a noticeable price bump compared to last year's model. Meanwhile, buyers of the S26 and S26 Plus could enjoy solid performance improvements without a major cost hike. That said, it's all early speculation, nothing's confirmed until Samsung drops the official numbers. Now, let's talk about something most people overlook, thermal throttling. It's actually not a defect, it's a safety feature that kicks in when your device gets too hot, slowing performance to protect the hardware from damage. Every chip has a temperature limit, and once that threshold is crossed, performance takes a hit until things cool down, that's why you often see massive drops between peak and sustained performance during long gaming or benchmark sessions. And yeah, the Galaxy S25 Ultra struggled with that. Despite its huge body, the phone still overheated during stress tests like 3D Mark and Geekbench, showing only around 46% stability. That's alarmingly low for a flagship. Things got so bad that infrared scans showed just how hot the phone got under heavy load. Clearly, Samsung needs to rethink cooling for the upcoming S26 Ultra, and that's where things get really exciting. Enter the liquid air cooling revolution. Brands like Red Magic are already using hybrid cooling systems with micro pumps and non conductive fluorinated liquids. Yeah, basically water cooling inside a phone. Crazy, right? The setup uses a 0.85 millimeter ceramic pump and a 24,000 RPM fan working with a vapor chamber coated in liquid metal, boosting cooling efficiency by up to 50%. That's server grade tech crammed into your pocket. That means the phone could automatically switch between f1.5 and f2.4 depending on lighting. Wide open for low light shots, tighter for daylight landscapes, smart flexibility that pros have missed for years. Bringing it back could seriously elevate the Ultra's camera game, especially when Apple is still struggling with basic AI photography. Battery-wise, expect the same 5000 mAh capacity as before, but improved power management should help the S26 Ultra last longer than the S25 Ultra, maybe even push close to two full days with One UI 8.5 optimizations. As for dimensions, leaks suggest 163.4 by 77.9 by 7.9 mm, slightly taller and slimmer than last year's model with smoother curves on the sides, though not as rounded as the upcoming iPhone 17 Pro Max. That bigger frame combined with more efficient chips might just make the S26 Ultra Samsung's most balanced flagship yet, even if it does come with a higher price tag. 
quality never comes cheap, right? So yeah, that's the full rundown on the Galaxy S26 Ultra. New chip strategy, possible camera comeback, and some serious performance talk. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the breakdown, and subscribe to TechTorch for more upcoming leaks and updates.